uh, we'll just give you some quick background on, on us. And I, when I say quick, I mean very quick. Uh, we're, you know, if you notice our names, Travis and Trinity Townsend, we're brothers. Um, we're also lawyers. We uh, come from the state of Michigan. We went to the University of Michigan undergrad. I went to the University of Michigan Law School, and my brother went to the uh, University of Emory Law School, and we both worked at law firms and been working over the past seven years uh, practicing law. Um, but one of the reasons why we're here today, this is sort of, I mean, I do, I do business law, corporate law, transactional law. My brother does tort law. He makes sure everybody, you know, if you have an uh, injury or somebody who's uh, been harmed by a big company, he does that. He protects folks, and he also protects companies. Um, but today we're here to give you guys some important information about criminal law. And by a sort of show of hands, I just want to find out how relevant this is for you guys. How, how many people in here have, know somebody who's been in jail or know somebody who's been charged, arrested, convicted, or had the police come by? Show of hands. Look, look around. It's, it's almost everybody, right? Just about everybody. Um, and that means that this information touches all of you guys. It has already. You might not have known it, but we're going to explain a lot of things to help sort of take the veil and the mystery out of sort of that question about why such and such as mom is, is, you know, had the kids taken away for a couple of weeks or why their dad's been gone for two years or why your cousin, and he was just hanging around with these guys. You didn't know he, he, he never sold drugs, but now he's doing five or ten years. We're going to talk about all of that stuff um, to help you kind of navigate yourselves on, in addition to the information you get within the classroom with math and science and reading, we're going to teach you about criminal law. Just to kind of get you started, we always had to go through this process. Um, the information here is condensed because we try to make it easy for you guys to understand. And so we, we skip over a few things just to make it easier for you guys to get and get through a lot of it real quickly. So that means that you can't just take this information and let that be the end all be all. What we're going to do is give you context in order for you to have a base to start out. But if you find yourselves in trouble with the law, contact the lawyer. Contact the lawyer, have a personal, uh, personal sort of interaction, personal interview, tell your mom, get somebody there and talk to them personally about your situation. Don't just run off with just what we, with, with limited, what we talk about here and say I can fix it and I can figure it out and I know what I'm gonna do. Always contact the lawyer. Now, you guys, you, know, you, you raised your hand, everybody, hands is up. That's a lot of people. I mean, if you think about it, that's a lot of people that you know close to you that's in the system. Anybody, you guys wonder why that is? Anybody have an idea why that is? Why what? Why so many people can raise their hands and say, I know somebody that's in the system, been in jail, been arrested. Why is that? I mean, it's people not supposed to go to jail, really. We do, do it, do it. First of all, that's a question we assume. Does everybody understand that? Do, people are ignorant. Peop, people are ignorant of the law. That's right. That's one, of the, that's, that's one of the things. People are ignorant of the law. Some people just want to be thugs, right? I know y'all know. Come on, let's be real. What's that? You know somebody. They want to fit, fit in. in. People want to fit in. <laughs> yeah, well, they right. might not they use that in. word, but you right. might not use that phrase, but, but, well, but for real, though, it's like And they don't think wanna... about the fact that doing something to fit in will lead them to jail. But the, the thing is, all of this stuff, everyday stuff, doing things, there are things that you don't think about that's fitting in, leads to jail. Why some of these regular things, why are they criminal? Why they end up landing you in jail? It's because the, the criminal justice system, the prison system, um, it's, really, it's really about big business. Prison is big business. You understand? You think prisons just happen? I think prisons is just some free, it's just, it's free, it's a place people like locking people up, or it's business. And, I mean, there are big time business guys who invest large amounts of money. The people, not Bill Gates, but guys that run in his circles, Bill Gates, big money. They'll take money they've made in other industries and put it into building a prison in, this, in your state. And they do that because they know how to make money. And they know how to make money by investing in, business, in prisons because they know People will be coming into those prisons over and over and over again. They make money by getting a body in there. You know, anybody understand how hotels work? How do hotels make money? Check in, people staying overnight. They make more money if they stay two nights, maybe a week, right? And the more people who stay, right, the better, right? Because no right. hotel ever wants to have it where, you know, only 25% of the rooms 
are occupied, right? They want to have the more people, the more money. Y'all know this anyway, right? The more people, more money, right? Okay, so the thing about prisons, you got to kind of open your mind a little, back, a little bit and think about that. What do prisons do? They house people, right? That's really what it is, right? As a matter of fact, you know there's a name they call prisons. They call it the big house. Ex exactly, see? Think about it, the big house. So that, that's what they do, right? And they, and they want to make money doing that. Now, so we know they make, hotels make money, bodies in beds, overnight, long stays. Prisons make money, same way, bodies in beds, mm -hmm. overnight, long stays. And if very wealthy people put their money into this industry, hoping to make money, if they, if they make money by bodies being in beds, you think they want bodies to not be in those beds? So you think, you think they're going to do something to try to make sure that bodies stay in those beds? Yeah. All right. So there's a force out there that's based on money, big business, big money people, powerful people. There's a force out there that's working to put bodies in prison. Now, where y'all think they're going to get those people? Somebody where? Said, somebody said off the streets. The hood, the ghetto. Oh, and just, just one quick point, too. There's an added benefit. In addition to getting money by having bodies in beds, you know when you go to jail, slavery, slavery ain't dead. Did y'all learn that? The slavery was ended, it was abolished? How much did y'all read about that, though? Because you know slavery's not, it's not illegal. It's, it's one place where slavery's legal. In prison. That's right, jail 13th prison. Amendment. That's right. This is in the Constitution, the highest law of the land. If you have somebody, you can put somebody in voluntary servitude if it's for punishment for penalty of a crime. So in, in addition to getting paid by states to have the bodies and house them, they also can put you to work for like 13 cents an hour, 30 cents an hour, doing whatever they need you to do. That's a lot of cash right there. Yeah. The thing about it, they get, they get a double benefit. They get, they get money for housing you, but then they put you to work. And you basically free labor, right? Yeah, so, there's, so, there's, so it's a double, double benefit to them, right? So they can, get, they can get, they get paid for having you in there, and then they can have you making some license plates or building something or cleaning up neighborhoods. Now, we, back to who's, whose body's going into those beds? Poor people. Hood. You know what it is? Because they don't have the money to fight it. You know, if you, you big time, you can be OJ, you puffy, you can be Jay-Z. Yeah, not, not guilty. You can pay for somebody to come in and fight, fight for you. But if you poor, half the time, folks, y'all know people that, uh, that went to jail or been, been arrested. What are they, they, what are they, what are they talking about? You ever heard them talk about a public defender? That's who they had, a public defender? Public defenders are overworked, and they worn down, and they just don't have the energy or the time. You ain't never heard one of your favorite rappers or favorite music guys talk about their public defender because they go and spend the dough and get somebody real. But if you're not that, if you ain't got no money, you're going to either have a public defender who's overworked and just don't got time and want to plead you out, or you're just not going to have nobody. And, and you got to think about it. You know, this is, one of, this is one of the reasons why I'm like you to listen. You can, you can, it's fine. The music is cool, whatever. But, but you can't follow everything they say because, like, like my brother said, once they get in trouble, they have the resources. So, yeah, you know, Kelly and Jigga, they can, you know, Jigga, Kelly, not guilty and all that. And that's cool. But in real life, the hammer's going to come down on you. Because you have to, and look, I can, I can tell you between the both of us, attorneys aren't cheap, by the way. They're not cheap. So if you haven't saved up a lot of money, and they usually charge by the hour, right? So it's something like some ridiculous amount. Whatever type of attorneys that, that Jay-Z and Kelly and Diddy would, would, would retain would probably charge them anywhere from like, probably about $500, $600 an hour. That's and they modest. work all day <laughs> on their case, and they work for days and days and days. So just think about it. What if you, were, you, you got 600, you're making $600 an hour, and you're working 10 hours, because they're going to work over eight hours, 10 hours a day, right? Uh, it, exactly. You're gonna exactly. You're gonna make a ton of cash. That's so. That's the type of cash you would have to have, though. Quick public service around it. That's a that's a plug for getting your education to go to law school. <laughs> if you think about that. Six hundred, eight hundred dollars an hour. You make a G in like a, in a couple hours. You have fifteen hundred dollars. So, think about that one. Um,
Now, we already touched on this. We asked why. So many, and some of you guys were smart. You were right on it. Said the, uh, the education, they're ignorant. So the poor and the undereducated. You can be poor, but if you educate yourself, you can still avoid being one of those bodies in the beds. And that's the goal. We all, that all makes sense, everybody? We want to avoid being a body in the bed? All right. So the uneducated. We're here to try to help you fix that. We're here as teachers and educators. We're lawyers by day, and that's what we do. We charge other folks $800 an hour, $400 an hour for services, but we're here on our time to help you guys out as teachers and educators. Just want to make sure you don't have to go somewhere and pay that. Now, you guys also, now you, what, you, what class? This is a science lab, right? Oh, what is this? Peer okay, okay, peer leadership. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Now, but you have what are the what are the major classes? What are you guys taking on your schedule? Somebody give me your schedule. Chemistry. Chemistry. World history. Uh, weight training. Spanish. 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 All right. So we got we got math. We got we we got a, we got a good amount now. We got math somewhere in there with these languages. That's language and reading and things like that. Science. World history, we got world history and government and things like that. How many in here taking a criminal law class? Show of hands. That's right. Now, the thing about that is kind of amazing. You know why? You got to learn. You got to learn science. You have to learn math. You have to learn reading because people imagine that you have to know these subjects to navigate the world. You get an education, you go, a co go to college, you need to know how to read. You need to know how to calculate your money. But it's amazing nobody teaches you about the law because you can learn, you can be a, a straight A student. Anybody heard of anybody that was like a rock star athlete or, or, or a straight A student or both and they got in, tr in trouble? Sure Went to jail? Oh, yeah. stupid, stupid stuff. Yeah. Now they, they hold their college plans in jeopardy, aren't they? Yeah. So we're here to give you guys that missing subject. We're going to teach you guys some criminal law because we know you guys need that in addition to your math, your reading, and science. We want to make sure that stuff doesn't go to waste because you're ignorant in criminal law and criminal justice system. OK, and the next thing is to give you what we call important survival skills. And we say survival skills. We're not talking about you know, dropping you off in the middle of a jungle and, uh, you, or a desert, and you're figuring out how to survive by killing a bear and eating his flesh and stuff like that. We're talking about surviving the system. All right, making it where you guys don't end up as a statistic, right? So that's our goal. Okay, today's focus, we're going to talk about guilt by association. We talk about that because that's one of the main ways that young people especially and older people get in trouble. Not by stuff that they do all the time, but by stuff people they know do or people they hang out with, you know, hanging out with the wrong people. We're also going to talk about, now this is a hot thing, it's picking up, it's fairly new, uh, crimes related to cyberspace and technology. And then finally, we're going to close out by giving you guys some information about what to do when you actually run into the cops. Even if you do everything you can to keep your nose clean, you might run into them, right? They just stop you. So we're going to give you some information about that too. Guilt by association. Quick. Asking somebody to commit a crime that's a crime. I know, right? Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Even if you don't do anything yourself, you don't, gotta, you don't have to go show up. You don't have to steal what it is. You don't have to break in nowhere. You don't have to start the, the fight. If you ask somebody to do anything that's criminal, it's the, particularly it's the solicitation of a crime. It's called, yeah, there's a name for it. It's called solicitation. When you ask someone to commit a crime, it's called solicitation. And, and, and to give you an idea, asking for the hookup. Now, everybody knows what the hookup is, right? You know, you go in the, you got a friend that works at, Win does people, do people still work at fast yeah, food said, places? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you got a friend that works at Wendy's, and it's yeah. like, hey man, throw an extra like, fry in the back. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, oh, okay, see, exactly, see, so, Walmart. and here's, and here's why. Here's why. Think about it. When you ask somebody to hook, hook you up, what are you actually asking them to do? That's, that's, that's exactly right. what it is. That's exactly what it is. You ask, you're asking them to steal for you, right? And stealing is a crime. So that's why 
you will get in trouble for that. Now, here's the thing. Let's be honest. Most times when you're in the store, you're at a restaurant, and you ask for the hookup, most times you're not going to get in trouble, right? This is what we always tell people. Just because you haven't got caught right. doesn't mean you won't get caught. And all it takes is one time, and that's it, right? Because the thing is, if, if, let's say, manager overhears, right, and you have a manager who's not cool, they didn't like you anyway. They didn't even want you really to get hired. They don't like you, and they're like, you know what, got you, right? There it is. So you have to be, you have to be mindful of that. Agreeing with somebody to commit a crime, and this one right here is, the, is one of the biggest ones. Agreeing with somebody to commit a crime is the crime of conspiracy. And conspiracy is, is, is the big bad joker, right? It's, it's tough. It's conspiracy is why probably 80% of the people you know uh, uh, that are in jail or been in trouble with the law is why they're in there. You probably don't know exactly. You ever had that? I don't know exactly. He wasn't even, he wasn't in it as, as much as he was and this, that, and the other. It's related to conspiracy. Now, we kind of, we try to, in order to help people understand this conspiracy, then we walk through sort of an, an example um, to give you guys a real idea of how dangerous it is. Right, yeah. You, okay. So, a lot of times, especially before, I mean, right after school is out for some reason in the summertime, you have a time where the kids are out, but parents are working or whatever. And some kids get the bright idea that they want to break into houses. You know, y'all know about this. They want to break into houses while people are at work. Number one, people at work, so you shouldn't be, they working, so you shouldn't be breaking into house. But anyway, people want to, kids want to do that, right? So let's say you had, you got, you have three kids, right? Teenagers, three of them, and they decide, hey, let's break into this house, you know, around two o'clock. No one's going to be home. We're going to just break in, take, I know they got a flat screen over here right down the block. Go in there, kick the door in, run in, get it, and get out, right? Okay, so they all agree to meet up at three o'clock. Well, so they they meet. Or, so, sorry, two o'clock. So they meet up at that time at the place at the house. Right, they're outside, and one of the kids says, "I can't do it. I can't do it. I wasn't brought up that way. My mom's would kill me if I found she found out or whatever." Right. So I'm not breaking in. I'm leaving. Right. And the other two, all right, forget him then. He leaves. That kid leaves. So then what happens is. The other two, they decide they're just going to go ahead and go in. So what, once the kid's gone, other kid's gone, they break in, boom, run in. But they thought nobody was home, somebody was home. Just so happens, though, one of them, you know how that song, I brought, brought heat for situations like this, right? So somebody is home, and he ends up shooting the guy that's home. They run out, but they get caught. And when they get caught, the police, what do you think the police do? They usually separate them first. They separate them. And then they start asking them questions. And one of the questions they usually ask is, was there anybody else involved in this? Because if you tell me, well, you know, things will go easier on you. If you just tell me, just let, let, let me know. Right. Just let us know. That's right. <laughs> now, so what happens is, they start thinking, both of them start thinking because they separate. It's like, you know what, we did have a third guy. He did say he was part of this. He, he showed up with us, and then he just left, right? So they go get the kid. Now, here's the thing. Let's say at the time that all this went down, the kid, he actually went home. His mom was home. He right there with, with her. She's watching him while all the stuff is going down, right? They can still get him, right? They, go, they take him in. His mom says, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Why y'all taking him? His friends broke in, right? Now, we always ask this question. Who, are, who all are in trouble in that situation? Who are all the people that are in trouble? But for which crimes? Because you got, you got different things. Now, what he, but there were, okay, so there was a break in, and then there was a shooting too. Now, who's in trouble for the, the, the who, who's in, you saying? Okay, so, okay, yes, okay, so you got one shooter, one, one, one person on the hook for the, shot, for the shooting, one person on the hook, well, two people on the hook for the break-in, another guy, I guess, for being an accessory to some extent. Anybody got a different answer? Okay. Now, we'll give you guys the answer. All three of them on the hook for everything that happened. The break-in, the shooting, even the dude that was at home playing PlayStation with his mama. <laughs> Yep, they all three, all three, if they, for, for the shooting, they all three on the hook for the shooting. 
That's how conspiracy works. Con huh? It don't matter. You know, it doesn't matter you, because this he, is how conspiracy see, works. Go, we're gonna go back. This is, by the way, if you go to law school, this is kind of how they teach you in law school. Like when you learn the rule, you gotta always apply the rule. They, they agreed, right? The crime itself was agreeing. So, here's the other thing: you get in trouble for whatever anybody did to help move the crime along. When you said okay. Now, here's the thing. In some places where you live, if you say, OK, that's not quite enough. But if you show up, like well, how I said he showed up and then he left, if you showed up, you're on the hook. Like, you can't get off. There is a way to get out the hook. Y'all not going to like the answer to it. But, but the thing is, you are, once you showed up, you're on the hook. Like, yeah. if one of your crazy friends who's trigger happy decide to just go crazy, even though you're not a killer, you're in trouble. You're in trouble for what he decided to do. Remember, what's the backdrop? When we started this out, you got to understand, you guys are thinking about ways in which people can be out where they cannot be bodies in those beds. But what we, what's the, what, what we know is the backdrop. The prisons are trying to do what? Put bodies in those beds, right? So this is a nice tool in order to get more than two people. It's cool if they got the two people that were there. But how about they came up with a system and a, and a, and a charge that they could get three people, right? Because the goal is to get bodies in beds. That's money. Right? So they're yeah. not trying to find ways to get you out. They're trying to find ways. Well, you were close yeah. enough tied to it. They may never show up at the house at all if you hadn't agreed. But when the guy asked you, if you had said no, he might have said no and went home, and y'all could have just played PlayStation together. But when you said yeah, you encouraged them. So that's what made it happen. All that was your fault. That's now, why they put everybody in on that. Now, now here's the now here's the next question. There, remember I said there's a way to get out of it, and I think most of you know how. Snitch. You snitch now. I know, because yeah. I used to be a teacher, and, I, and my kids used to always say, you know, snitches get, get stitches. I used to say that. And I used to say, well, that's cool. If you, look, my thing is this. If you have, if that's your code, and you believe in that, and you, hey, you, hey, do it then, if that's you. But, but if you live by a code, that also means you die by that code. And one of the things that, that I don't know what they tell you in the schools, what y'all tell each other, but one of the things you got to understand is, there's no, what is this phrase called? There's no honor among thieves. People that do bad stuff are not honorable. So why are you thinking, well, you know, my boy would never snitch on me, so I won't snitch on him. It never works like that. And I can give you a real life example. Michael Vick. Michael Vick went to jail longer than the other, other two guys involved, right? And he's a star, right? You know why he went to jail longer than the other two? Because they told on him. And right. not just because they told, they told first. Right. You can't just be a snitch. You got to be a fast snitch. You got to be a quick snitch. Don't just, don't wait. Don't be slow thinking about it. As soon as you get a chance, you need to run and be like, hey, I got something to tell y'all. Hey, yeah, we encourage snitching because the guy with you going to snitch. So just don't right. be the fool and be the last one to snitch. That's right. I will Ex snitch first. Exactly. I mean, look, that, so that's what, they, that's what they teach you, but we're telling you the real. Like, it, whether, you know, that's what they tell you. Friends will tell you, but we're telling you the real. And the thing is... Well, well, one of the reasons why they say that, too, is, look, I'm going to be honest with you. The people that commit the crimes, they don't want you to snitch on them, but they snitch on you. So that's like, yeah, I got him. I mean, he, he's not going to tell him. Like, Mike, Mike thought, Mike was like, one of the guys was his cousin. And he's like, I know my cousin's not going to snitch on me, so I'm not saying anything. We're all not going to say anything. Yeah, like, Mike look. was breaking them off bread. Right. <laughs> so keep that in mind. And he, they still told on him. And this is, this is a, <laughs> a little illustrated example. Hold on just a second. Let's go back. Right. Malcolm has had beef with John John since last year when John John tried to holler at his girl, Ashley, at their high school graduation party. It's good, like a punk. Fine. John John tried to push up on Ashley while Malcolm wasn't around. It's a year later, and Malcolm is still kicking it with Ashley. Hey, babe, let's go check out my homie Carlos at the Summer Basketball League. Yeah, that sounds good. Let me grab my purse. Wanting to check out his homie Carlos' school some fools on the court. Malcolm and Ashley roll up to one of Carlos' summer basketball league games. As Malcolm and Ashley are going up to the bleachers to find some seats, that fool John John, who's sitting on the bottom row, tries to grab Ashley's arm to talk to her, as if Malcolm wasn't right there with her. John John's disrespect gets Malcolm heated, and he decides that enough is enough. At halftime, Malcolm goes into the locker room to let Carlos know what went down. It's time to clap this fool. He grabbed my girl's arm in front of me like I was a sucker or something. You gonna help me or what? You know I got you. Just wait until the next dead ball so I can get my bat. As promised, 
at the next dead ball, Carlos takes himself out of the game and walks over to Malcolm. You ready to get this fool? Malcolm and Carlos run up on John John. Yeah, punk. What's up now? Told you about trying to talk to my girl. And commenced to beating him unconscious. In the midst of the beatdown, Officer Petty and Grimes swoop in and arrest Malcolm and Carlos. And the two get charged with assault and battery. Surprisingly, they also get charged with conspiracy to commit murder because of how bad they were whooping up on John John. Now, now the point... <laughs> Now the point of that illustration, the point of that animation was one of the. Cause it's his boy. It's his boy. That's that's the whole point of conspiracy. He helped his boy out. But one of the points that we want to make before we move on is is that we said that you know in there it said that they got charged with attempt you know conspiracy to commit murder. And the thing is, you you know if you listen to that, they didn't say they were gonna kill the guy. But you got to think about it. The prosecutor, when they see how bad that they beat up on him, is going to be like, I think y'all tried to kill the guy. So they're going to also try to charge him with that. That's why sometimes when you hear about people getting charged with a lot of stuff, they try to put on as many things as they can, whatever will stick. You heard that phrase before. We're going to try to hit him with whatever sticks, right? That's why. So you have to be, that's why we say you have to be mindful of the things you do, because to them it's like, we're just going to beat him up, teach him a lesson. They might end up going to prison for a long time because they got convicted of conspiracy to commit murder. And we know why. They, they're not going to settle with an assault charge. They're going to go with murder charge. Assault don't, doesn't get as much time as murder, right? And, and that means we got longer stay. That's like getting that extra month hotel stay, that year, them extra years. Right. So the takeaways, asking for the hookup, results in criminal charges and conspiracy. You can be charged with any crime that moves the conspiracy along. And you can be completely on the hook for the crime uh, that you even if, that you weren't even around for, there's a possibility whenever you go into somebody's home that somebody's home, and then somebody might get shot. In fact, if the cops if the cops come in like the cops got called over and they came in and the cops shot one of the guys, who who broke in, the cop doesn't get charged with murder. Actually, the guys involved with the conspiracy gets charged with if the cop killed. Keep that in mind. If the cop killed the guy. All right, now holding, holding contraband, this is how you can be charged with an accessory. Holding contraband can make an accessory af after the fact. Does anybody? Contra contra contraband, by the way, you're you about to ask if they knew what that yeah. is. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> anything criminal, anything that's criminal evidence. Now, I mean, I know folks, anybody ever had their they friend, hold this for me. Hold this. Just hold on, you know, hold on. Girls get this all the time. You know, you my ride or die. Why don't you hold this? You know, it's a little heat on me. I'll come back and get it in a couple days. Why y'all smiling like y'all been asked? All right. That, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that's funny. No, it ain't, though. I know, <laughs> I know a woman that went to jail for five years for holding, for taking phone messages and for dropping her boyfriend off at a, at a dope house a couple times. She didn't, she, and she, I mean, the, the reports, all the evidence, all the investigation says she didn't have, she didn't sell anything, and they knew she wasn't deeply involved, but she participated. And she went, to five, she went for five years. You know, he only did, like, six months because he snitched, because he was the big-time drug dealer. He had people to tell on. She didn't. She, she didn't know nobody. She just, she just knew him, and they, that was just her boyfriend. She didn't know the supplier. She didn't know who was distributed. She didn't know the people on the street. Yeah, she knew. Come on. Now, this is the thing. She knew, just like most of y'all know, when y'all get laced with them new kicks and that Tiffany bracelet, and you know your boyfriend don't work no full-time job, and he like 16, and he got new rims. I mean, where you think he got that money from? Yeah, his mama, cause his mama, his mama got a one. She she got a car with the rims too, and she dressed just like that too. He dressed better than his mom. He live in his mom's house, and, and she supplying him with all this, so she can, so he can give it to you. Come on now, y'all know better. Yeah, he took out a loan. I was, we're gonna tell you. Yeah, I get it. Y'all funny, but y'all know what it is. The bottom line is, in real life, it's it's not funny. Right. The police will get you. They will get you because you know what? They putting bodies in beds. Y'all don't get it. And, that five and, years they got from her, they got paid. And keep in mind, too, and this is one of the things we say, too. It, you know, look, in school, there's certain things you learn in school, like how schools work. Like, for instance, you know, if, if somebody's talking over there and you start talking and the teacher picks on you and you're like, wait a minute, they're talking over there? And the teacher's like, well, all right, I don't want to. Well, in real life, here's how it works. If somebody else does something 
And you try to point to them, the cops are like, I don't care. We'll take all y'all down. I'm not trying to figure out who did what. I don't care. I'm not trying to, we're not trying to figure out if you really knew he was dealing drugs, your, if you didn't really know your boyfriend was dealing drugs, he told you that and this and that, all that. They don't, they don't try to figure that out. It's not like school where the principal tries to figure out who was involved in this and who tried, who started it and who said that to him. And she actually walked up to her and slapped her first. It's none of that. In real life, the police are like, we don't really care about all that. All y'all can go. Y'all, and y'all know what it is. I'm gonna keep saying it. Why is that? Bodies in them beds, y'all know it. Uh, we gotta, we gotta keep moving because this, this thing, we, it's so much information. Today is only a part of what we, our entire program. So we gotta get through some of it. But um, so we're gonna, we're gonna kind of keep moving. Um, so let, letting a friend hang out for a while, you know. It, hey man, let me just hold up in your house for a while. You know they was up to something. They drove by. They wanted to stop in your crib. They didn't park the car in front of your house. You're like, how you get here? Oh, I'm, I'm around the corner. That, that kind of weird stuff. That'll make you an accessory after the fact. They hang out for the day. They want to play Madden. That's your boy. Y'all play Madden anyway. You like, cool. If your friend asks you something like that, let me hold up in the house and it's weird, something weird going on. So, hey, man, I don't know what you got going on. You're going to have to roll out. Even if, if you don't want to, if you don't want to look like a sucker, be like, yo, man, I'm sorry. I got to roll. Make something up. I got to get up out of the house. I got to go somewhere. I had to be somewhere. I know right. how that go. You don't want to tell your boy you can't come in the house, man. I mean, make something up, but seriously, that's how you can get busted. Right. Okay, driving the car can put you on the hook. Like, for instance, if, if you had that friend, that's all. You, I mean, look, growing up, I can tell you this. I had friends. My brother had friends. The one that, that just couldn't stop smoking. <laughs> and it's like, that, that friend, you know what? That friend, we were always like, you, you can't ride, you cannot ride with me. Do not, do not ride with me, <laughs> right? So, so you got to do that because if you get caught, remember what I said earlier, if you get caught, they're not trying to figure out, oh, that's his, that's his, that's his. That's his. They like, we don't care, y'all in trouble. Well, you know what, Here's, let's put it this way. What, what's, the better, what's the better case? And we're going to move on, but tell you what's the better, if it's on a person and I'm the other person, right, and I'm the other person, it's easier for me, to, it was on him. And you could, if you got a decent attorney, you could probably get off on that. But if it's in a cup holder and the other person's like, that's his, and you're like, that's his, everybody's getting it. They're going to say it's y'all's, and y'all were all together trying to distribute right. it. Right. So keep that in mind. All right. Now, this is, this is like the new hot thing, and it's new, it's hot. It's not, the crime not necessarily hot, but the, the activity, cyberspace, cell phones, Internet. I mean, how many people got picture phones and camera phones? Y'all love them. They hot, ain't they? Yeah. Still take pictures of your homies and your peoples and you send them. Oh, y'all take what y'all what what y'all take pictures of with them? Yourself. Yourself. Oh, yourself. All right. Yeah. Kids, y'all, your ages are getting busted for this. It's like left and right these days. Kids that love at school just got busted for this. Sending Sexting. or forwarding nude or sexually suggestive or explicit pictures on your cell phone or online. Yeah, if you legal, you in trouble. You you're very you're in very much danger. We'll talk about that. Right. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna tell y'all. First of all, the first thing I'm gonna say is if you have these, if you have pictures, just think to yourself, yes, I do. When we ask questions about this stuff, you don't need to say, yeah, I got them right here, because that that's a crime. <laughs> if you if you send for it or have have these pictures, you could be in trouble. Now, I guess anybody know anybody who sent sex yes, messages? Yes, yes. <laughs> no, don't tell. I, don't what tell. I said, the first thing I tell. said, we're just, first thing I said we're was just don't tell if us. You know anybody? Don't, not, but just right. understand if you know somebody. So y'all know this is real. This this is real to y'all. We got we have some hands. All right, all right, hold on. And we've heard every, we've heard everybody say. I mean, just about everybody says. Everybody just about knows somebody. Who, who does? So we've kind of yeah. so we've established that. All right. right. Now there's there's obviously social consequences to sex messages. Uh, what what's like aside from crimes? Like what could what could happen negatively by? Other people, other people get them. Wait wait we're gonna take them one of the hands and then we'll go. They can be forwarded. You can end up on there's like a list of sex offenders. You can end up on that list for a long time. All right. We 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 don't hit the we don't hit the the spectrum a bit. Um, so, you know, we can get past all of that. Y'all hit that. Now, the criminal stuff, let's go on. We're going to go on to that. Um, child pornography. 
if you guys if you guys are underage, 15, 16, it's depending on where you're at, state you're at, whatever, um, sending those pictures or having those pictures is child pornography. If you have them, even if it's a picture of yourself, it's child pornography. So if you have clothes in your cell phone, you forward it to your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your whatever, homie, child pornography. <laughs> um, this is real. Child pornography is a, I mean, and that's, that, that could be any of you guys. So right now, remember I told you guys, if you got them on your phone, don't tell us, just get rid of them. Because it, it's, it's so strict, it's, just, it's what they call a strict liability crime. If you have them, they don't ask any questions about how you got them, who you got them from, where they came from. They see it and you the one holding it, you got it. Possession, child pornography. And if you send it, you can get busted for distribution, child pornography. And, and, and then... And keep in mind, the thing, too, is maybe you might be, people don't always think about the consequences as far as, like, maybe you might be underage, so you wouldn't get in trouble with sending a picture yourself, right? But let's say, I always give this example. Let's say you have your guy and, you know, whatever, you, 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 the, you the Mac of the school guy. Like, you know, girls just left and right. They just love you. And you, you're getting pictures and stuff, and you got an older brother, and you're like, hey, man, let me show you how I, let me show you how I be Mac these girls, man. I'm going to send you some of these pictures. But your brother is like 18. 17. Or even 17. <laughs> well, you might not get in trouble because you're 15, but he can get in trouble for having pornography on his. So here it is. You could send your older brother to prison. Why? Wait, what? Oh, yeah, so you woke up, didn't you? <laughs> no, the question, I'm and I, hold on, slow down. And everybody's probably wondering, I mean, it's the, he, what he was showing you was the example of how the information gets passed. Two, two adults, adults are adults, adults, but think about it, that's just like drinking, you know, adults can drink also, right? But the thing is, it's when you mix the adult with the, you know, if you're a child, you can't do adult things, right? And adults shouldn't be doing children yeah. things and stuff like that, right? So the thing is, it comes down to this, you really, because you can't control who, the, who they go to, you shouldn't be messing with it at all because you just don't have any control over that. Once it's out of your hands, it could be in the hands of a thousand people after that, right? You'd be out there like Rihanna, scared to go talk to her mom because some naked pictures of her on the web. We gotta, we gotta keep moving, we gotta keep moving. Um, the thing about that, when you get busted, now you could be a kid, this could have been a picture, if you, say you were a 17-year-old and your, your girlfriend's a, you're, you're a junior or a sophomore, I mean senior, football star, your girlfriend's a sophomore, and she sent you pictures and you got that. You get busted. Y'all was together all through high school. That's your girlfriend. You get busted for those pictures. Now you a sex offender. You got to register. Sex offenders cannot live by kids. So if you have a sister in your house that's like 14 or a younger brother, you got to get up out the house and find somewhere to live. And then you, it ain't a lot of places you can go. You can't live by schools. You can't live by churches. You can't live by almost anything. You got to get up out the house, try to find a way to pay for it, and you can't live. There's nowhere for you to go. Yeah, basically, you, you got to live in the Somebody said yeah. that. You basically got to live in, in the woods or trailer park or something. Where they gonna work? Yeah, right. Now, how you going to work? You can't go to school. What's, what school are you going to go to? They ain't got no schools for sex. They ain't got no all sex offender schools. That's what they do. I mean, it's kind of like jail. I mean, you can go to. What ends up happening is all this stuff that keeps you, now you stuck, you don't have nowhere to live, you can't afford to live because you can't stay with your mom, you, ain't, you haven't even graduated yet, you probably end up committing some crimes. Because you got to eat, You got to right? pay your bills. That's what's going to happen. And then, then where they got you, then what they, did they, then what, what you going you gonna to be one of them bodies. That's right. All right, so, you know, restrictions on, uh, and we're going to kind of move through some of this stuff because, like I said, we got a ton of information, but uh, cyberbullying, it's, all kinds, of, all kinds of statistics on it. Um, but the bottom line is almost everybody, almost everybody in high school, of high school age, has been bullied or bullied somebody over the internet, cell phone or something. You know them nasty messages, them, t them dirty, I'm going I'm to do this to you, or I'm going to tell such and such about how you was doing this, or them, them thousand text messages that you send, or the thousand emails that you send because you mad at somebody, that stuff. That's cyberbullying. They got or some stuff you put on your Facebook. It's like, y'all know, you know who I don't like? Y'all know that girl in my class who she sit in the fifth row. Yeah, them Facebook polls. She always Who's smell bad. Y'all know who we're talking about. I ain't gonna say her name, though. But she like this tall. She like she this complexion. I ain't gonna say her name, though. <laughs> y'all, come on. Y'all know about that, that, doing that. That's cyberbullying. 
<laughs> people got time. Y'all get y'all y'all make time. Uh, well, the thing about and, and they say like you you break in breaking into your friend's Facebook account, MySpace account. There ain't nothing wrong with it. Yes, it is. Yeah, you want to know what's wrong with that? It's identity theft. That's about like you just trying to stack. It's identity theft. No, I'm just saying like they leave their Facebook up. If you go in there, it's identity theft. If they, because they think, because they think it's that See, person. See, you need right? this. <laughs> <laughs> you need this in particular. <laughs> no, seriously, identity theft, federal crime, federal crimes. These serious. This one, them alphabetic, called Alphabet Boys, FBI, ATF, FBI show up for the, for the identity theft. Because if you're using a computer, and if you're using the internet, the internet yeah. is across the the world basically. So it's a, so that's what makes it a federal offense. Stalking. Like I said, them thousand text messages, you call your girlfriend or your boyfriend and they won't take your calls and she call you and call you and she t you send a text message, you, you the boyfriend, she won't take your calls because she go with somebody else and you text her and text her, I bet not see you tonight. That's stalking. It's stalking, it is. And this, this is a new one they rolling out on y'all. This is a new one they rolling out on y'all. Harassment by computer. Only requires one incident. So if you on the computer and you send a message or, or Facebook or something and you say, man, I can't stand you, I'm going to mess you up, or you a slut, this, that, and the other, one time if you use a computer to do that, it's a new crime they're rolling out, you can get busted. And it don't take a whole lot of text messages, a whole lot of status messages, a whole lot, one time. Now, you know, that's, you know what that's about. That's right. <laughs> All right. So that was our quick speed through on uh, cyber crimes. Now we got to get you, get you guys some information. Like you said earlier, even if you keep your nose clean, you still might run into the police. That's right. Right. So we'll give you some quick tips on what you need to do when you encounter the police. First thing, when you, when you uh, run into the, to the cops, you should always you know, understand that you, you have rights that protect you. We're going to give you a couple, uh, just to give you Background, we're gonna give you a couple scenarios to help you deal with the police if they come to your house and things like that. That is key. If the cops don't have a search warrant, don't give them permission to enter your house. Police, open up. Zebediah Gibson, can we come in? Do you have a warrant? Look, we just wanna come in and ask you a few questions. No, I do not consent to you entering my house unless you have a valid warrant. We'll be back with the warrant. Well, until you come back with one, I don't consent to you entering my house or to any kind of search. Now, with that one, they were coming to his house and they wanted to do a search. He asked me to have a warrant. That was the first step. Always ask for a warrant. The police can't come to your house and just search without having a warrant or some sort of urgency of probable cause. The, the warrant will be based on probable cause. A probable cause is a technical term. I just want to see anybody understand what probable cause is. Yeah. What? Like an excuse? Yeah, yeah well, well, it's what we call it's a, a reasonable basis under which they believe that a crime was committed and that evidence of the crime will be found in the place they want to search. So if they have that, one, in ways, there are a lot of ways to get probable cause. A snitch that did it, that committed a crime with you. He could tell that's good information. Somebody saw you, you're on camera, videotape, they look at evidence. Other witnesses, they saw you. So if they can go get, talk to these people, go to a judge, get a warrant, then they can come to your house and search. And everybody knows what a warrant is, right? Yes. It's basically, well, we, we define it in our book as it's a, basically a permission slip by, signed by a judge for, to allow them to go into your house or to search your things, or you. Now. So, and if they don't have a warrant, you can let, they can get in with, through consent. And that's why they asked them. Because they didn't have a warrant, they said, let me in. If you let a cop, if they don't have a warrant, they can't get in. But you can always let anybody in your house. You can let your, mom, your aunt, your friends. So just like that, cops are people. You can let them in the house, too. And then they can search. Always read any search warrants that the cops come to your house with. Police, open up. Zebediah Gibson. We have a search warrant for this house. Can I see the warrant? This isn't my address. This warrant says 1230 Mockingbird Lane. This house is 1280 Mockingbird Lane. 
I don't consent to you searching my house. It's a typo. You might as well let us in because you know we're coming back with a warrant that has the correct address. Nope. Until you get a valid warrant for this house, I don't consent to any search. No, the problem is people don't ask them to read it. The question, just so everybody know, the question was why do, why do the cops not actually let them read it or show them? They just show the warrant and then go in. But there are a lot of reasons. One, sometimes there are typos. And sometimes, if, like, it, they can almost get consent. It's, it's a lot of tricks that the police use. But the bottom line is, you see how he asked them? He took it and he read it? That's what you guys should do. If they have a warrant, that's one thing, but you still got to read the warrant because the warrant has to have, it has to meet certain requirements. Yeah, it has to have, it has to have a judge's signature or magistrate is a judge too, but um, it has to be fairly recent and the address has to be correct. And, and if it, sometimes they have, the things that they have to, that they want to look for have to be on, or the people they're looking for have to be on there. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why we say education is extremely important because reading is fundamental. Because if you don't know how to read, Right. Let's say you're a person that doesn't that doesn't know how to read. You don't want to look like a dummy in front of the cops. Or whatever. you're like, yeah, okay, I, all right. And you let them in, and something's wrong with the warrant. That's on you. You messed up. Right. So it's one of the reasons why you should should pay attention in school. Now, the cops. That's that's a, your house is sort of your castle. So that's why they have. There's very very strict rules. They gotta have a warrant. Warrant has to be accurate. All of that. Um, we're on the street, it's a little bit more free. The reason why a house is like, the, it has higher levels of protection because you expect a certain level of privacy in your house, right? You go home, you can do all kinds of things you don't expect people to see if you are, on, if you are out on the street. <laughs> that's the thing too, that's one of the things we want to make sure, like a lot of that stuff you see on TV, that's not how it really goes down. I mean, some, you know, every now and then, there's some things. Like one of the things you could take from the, from the training day thing was when he came and walked in and he had that warning, he just threw it and said, I got a warning, he walked right in. That happens and you, you pointed that out. The movie, Denzel Washington. You know the sort of movie? Yeah, I haven't seen it. Oh, well. Well, now we'll say this, sometimes. Now, cops say, sometimes the cops, like some people say, well, what about when they do a raid? The thing about the raid thing is a lot of times the reason, yeah, the reason why they can do that when there's a raid is because essentially, one, they think that if, let's say somebody's in the house, right? If somebody's in the house, they're not opening the door, but they have a search warrant, and they think that those right. people might be flushing the stuff down the toilet or getting rid of it, they have every right to break, break down the door and go in then. And that's usually why they'll say, those, those are called urgent or exigent circumstances. And when it's like that, just like if somebody was running, and they, they cops would chase them, and the person runs in the house, the cop can go right in the house then because it's an exigent circumstance. So when they think somebody is flushing stuff down the toilet or getting rid of it or something like that, that's when they can just go ahead and kick the door down. But the thing is, who knows if it's in, say like, if, what do you think a common, tech, a common tactic is if the p police come in to serve a warrant and they knock on the door? What do you think most, most criminals do? They, he says, what if, what if they, the, the people inside are asleep? Well, that's right, that's what, yeah, basically. All right, we're good. Right. All right, yeah, we, we, that we was gotta, a good point. That was a good point. He says the police knock. He said the police knock is different than any other knock in the world. That's right. That's a good point. We got to roll through. We got to. We got to. We want to get you get these other pieces. Um, <laughs> when the cops right. stop you on the street, understand that most times they ask you questions about something. So just keep that in mind. Um, and anything that you say can and will be used against you, even if you didn't do anything. You just never know. Because remember. They're trying to get bodies in beds. Um, now, certain rights kick in when you're under arrest. So y'all watch Law and & Order and these TV shows, and y'all know the you know, right to remain silent, and lawyer, and all that. Those are what they call the Miranda rights. Those kick in in certain situations, mainly when you're under arrest, or you're under police detention. So it's important to know that, right? I mean, if, if you have rights to kick in under certain situations, it's important to know what those situations are. Hold on. We're going to get right through this. We'll get to you. Um, so what's the best way, it's right there, what's the best way to find out if your rights are kicking in or if you're under arrest? Ask. Ask. What, 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 what they don't tell you your rights? That's right. Well, we're going to, well, they have to tell you your rights, and we'll get to that, but the, they don't have to tell you that you're under arrest. Now, this is, this is something that plays out a if lot. If you think you're not free to go when the cops are trying to question you, for instance, if they crowd you, block you from leaving, or grab you, 
you should say. I'm going to remain silent, and I would like to speak to an attorney. The cops won't always tell you that you're under arrest, nor will they always read you your rights. So it's on you to tell the cops that you're going to remain silent and that you want an attorney when you feel that they're not going to let you go. Hey, how you doing? We were wondering if we could ask you a few questions. Officers, I would like to answer your questions, but not without an attorney present. Am I free to leave? Officer Petty doesn't say anything, but he and Officer Grimes start crowding Malcolm. Why aren't they saying anything? And why are they all up in my personal space? I think they might beat me up if I walk away. Officers, I'm going to remain silent, and I would like to speak to an attorney. One of the things that we, that we point out in this is a lot of people think that every time you're under arrest, the police tell you you're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent and all that, right? But see, think about it. Cops aren't dumb. One of the things they do is, let's say two cops walk like that. They walk up on you and, hey, we just want to talk to you. Just, just ask you some questions. Now, here's the thing. If you're being detained by police, right, and you can't, you're not free to leave, that's when you're under arrest. When you're not free to leave, when you want to, you're under arrest. So it is, it's not magic, like, you know, because they said it, it's, it's when you're not free to leave, that is when you're under arrest. So the thing, so that's why we go to that next part, which is how do you find out if you're under arrest? You ask, right? Because the thing is this. Let's, 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 I want you guys to really, and you guys are all smart, so I want you to really think about this. Let's say you go to, you, go to, you end up going to court, right? They decided that they, you know, they were going to arrest you, go to court. And your lawyer says, my client didn't know that he or she was under arrest, had no idea. Well, what the police officers will say is, could have left at any time. He just started talking, could have left at any time, right? And your attorney says, well, they were kind of crowding him. He could have left at any time. So the thing is, now here's the thing, if you were to ask, then what happens is, it's like, well, they didn't answer me. So then your attorney said, they didn't answer. He was pretty sure that if they're not going to answer you, you're probably under arrest, right? Because they're trying to hold out on you, right? And if they say you are under arrest, then you need to be quiet, right? And that's when you need to ask for an attorney. So the thing is, we tell, we tell, tell you know, students, hey, look, it's on you. They're not there to be, look, why do why you think they stopped you? They stopped you because they thought something was going down, right? You have to protect your rights. They're not there to protect your rights. You have to protect your rights. So you have to ask. And let me, let's just get to your point. If they don't read you your rights, the reason why we talk about all this, because it's not like like you're going to be smart and tricky and you're going to know your rights and then everything is going to fix itself right there in the moment. Like the cops will be like, oh, he knows his rights. Oh, we're going to leave him alone. What's going to happen is likely, you know, they might they might not read you your rights when they should because you're under arrest or you're detained. And then they proceed you in the cuffs in the car or they take you down and they ask you questions and they haven't read you your rights. All that will happen. Trial, everything will come up. But what you do is you tell your lawyer everything that happened. You tell them everything that happened, and you tell them they didn't read me my rights when I was under arrest. And what happens is everything that you said, because what happens, they go and they ask you, and you're going to talk about what happened and what you did or what you saw, and they'll use that at court. And they might use that to go get a warrant, to go to your house, and all this. So you tell your lawyer, and your lawyer will say they didn't read him his rights. Everything that, they, that he said, everything they found after that cannot be submitted for, as evidence against him. And, if, and then the judge, if they, hold, they should hold right, if, you, if your rights were not read to you when they should have been, everything after that, it gets thrown out, then they have no case against you. And then next thing, what will happen is your lawyer will probably say, okay, since the evidence is out, I move for the case to be dismissed. And then that's it. So that's why this stuff is important. It's not like it's going to fix everything immediately while you're in the moment, but it's throughout the process, it'll be what helps you, what saves you later on. Uh, we, got a, we got the wrap-up sign, but we just want to recap some of the stuff we talked about. Prisons, big business, sole purpose, getting bodies and bands to make money. Y'all understand, that's the whole context. That's what you live in. That's what's driving all this stuff that you deal with every day. Your people's getting locked up, all that pressure from the police, all of that. That's what's driving it. That's one of the things that's driving it. You know, you have, so you have to educate yourself in order to avoid being one of those bodies. So you don't be one of the people, the average people on the street that don't know no better. Uh, be careful for your associations and interactions, because that can land you in jail for stuff you didn't do. Be mindful of how you use your cell phones, the internet. Be cautious, polite, and remember your rights when encountering the police. We want to just quick reinforce that despite 
however, you know, how tough and rough and inappropriate the police may be when you encounter them, always be polite. Always be respectful. Be more respectful than they deserve because that, that'll save you. And, that'll and, save you. And I can tell you that from, from personal experience because I got stopped by a cop on, on Saturday night. What do you say? Actually, it was, uh, it was, in, it was in South Carolina. And, uh, and he said I was speeding. I, would, I wasn't from there, but he said I was speeding. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to get a ticket. But I, officer, I'm sorry, not from here. I didn't notice the sign. My mistake. You know, sorry about that, sir. And he, you know, he has my driver's license. And he's like, well, all right, look, just next time watch your speed. And he lets me go, right? So I know a lot of you don't like calling people sir or ma'am and all that. But when you're talking to a police officer, it does go a long way. I mean, I always tell people, sound like the lamest person you know when you're talking to the police. Because, I mean, unless you have, yeah, like, unless you have time or you have money, then, you know, you can do what you want to do, I guess. But, but the thing is, if you're like, look, I got, I got five, my parents got $500 to, you know, to pay the fine or whatever, fine. You can do that. Run your mouth if you want. But the thing is, be polite. And the last thing, I mean, I, like, like we were saying, we kind of ran through a lot of stuff. This is only sort of the tip of the iceberg about the information that we talk about and that's, that, that you guys really need to know. Um, and that, what accompanies this is a book. We, we wrote this book, made it very affordable for folks. You can find one. We got some here. You can find them online at CopsComeKnocking.com. And we also, I mean, um, sorry, get back to that. Uh, we have you know, a Twitter page, Facebook fan page, join, and like, as you can find us on the website. And just get more information. We give little tidbits of information. We, we speak at different places, so if you want more information, follow us, uh, join, become a fan, get that information. But these, this book will save you hundreds of dollars, maybe thousands, and tell your, mom, your, your parents about them. Tell your friends. There are a lot of you guys have friends that weren't here. And like you said, the average person, doesn't, they're not going to know, and they weren't here to hear this. So if you want to help them out, help your family out, tell them about the book and tell them about us so they can try to find and get the information themselves. Um, we just want to do a quick thank you to the high school for letting us come here. Um, Principal Vincent Murray, Elizabeth Lieberman, and I, I always have trouble pronouncing. Olo. <laughs> David Olo? Y'all just say Olo? Oh, see, I like to do the whole name. Olo, run for me. All right. Olo, run for me. Olo, run for me. Run for me. Okay. You're scary, you You scare you. <laughs> All right. All right, y'all. Well, thank you. You guys are a great audience. We really appreciate you guys' time. Thanks. You guys are awesome.